In this video, we're painting some B1 battle droids from Star Wars Legion. Hello there, and welcome to Zorba Zorb Gaming. My name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and today we're going to be diving into painting the B1 battle droids from Star Wars Legion. Now, these B1s are the backbone of any CIS army looking to take the fight to the Republic. They're available as their own separate product, and also in the Clone Wars Legion core set, which has just come out. FFG were kind enough to send me over a box so that I could get these all ready for you guys and put together a pretty sweet painting tutorial. So the B1s are kind of the next iteration of units from Fantasy Flight Games. They're the first kind of round of the hard plastic on sprue and they are absolutely jam-packed full of details. I've got an assembly guide coming as well so you guys can check out how to put them together but today we're going to just be covering the fundamentals of painting these droids and let me tell you they are a dream to paint. They come up absolutely amazingly and it is so easy to get them looking absolutely fantastic. In this first round of the tutorial we're going to cover all the basics of doing the kind of droid armor, the droid weaponry and some kind of basic stuff like our captain schemes and and crests and then I'm going to do a further video down the track where we go into a little bit more detail covering alternate paint schemes, different specializations, looking at bringing some extra colors into the palette to cover all those cool droids we know and love like the security OOMs and all the kind of specialization class paint schemes from Battlefront 2 and video games of ages past. So lots of extra stuff down the line for these droids but today we are just focusing on the basics and getting an amazing horde of droids ready for the tabletop. So let's dive into getting together some B1 battle droids to take the fight to the Republic. So as always, our first step is to make sure we've got a nice even prime all over the model. Today I'm using the Wraithbone Contrast Primer from Citadel Color or Games Workshop and just making sure I get really even coverage across all of the model. Now the first step that we're going to be doing is targeting the weapons of the droids using some Black Templar Contrast Paint. Now this paint's a really fantastic paint for hitting our droid weaponry because as we apply it, it kind of naturally separates with the contrast agents and gives us a really lovely subtle grey highlight across the high points on the droid weaponry and some nice deep recess detail through all of that gorgeous hard plastic detail we've got on the weapons. We want a nice even coverage over all of the droid weaponry but it's really important to make sure that we keep this black contrast paint off any elements of the droid armor and that includes our droid fingertips. So I like to use a medium sized brush to hit the larger areas of the weapon and then swap to something with a finer detail point to target all of the areas around the droid fingers including the trigger, the trigger guard, and the handle. We do not want any Black Templar on those areas of droid armor plating, otherwise we'll have to reprime those areas manually using the Wraithbone base coat. And this is why I do the weapons first, because if I make any mistakes and I do have to touch up any of the primed area, I've only got to just put down that base coat of the primer again. I don't have to go repainting entire steps of my droid armor paint scheme. Now there's a couple of special weapons in the squad, the E5C, which is that longer blaster that you can see in the model I'm painting, and then we've also got the rocket launcher, the E60R. Now these weapons are no different to the normal blasters in addition to the E5C model. There's also another blaster on the back of that droid, so make sure you get that one as well. But the rocket launcher is a little bit different. The E60R has some kind of quite large, broad surfaces, so what I like to do is use a bit of a bigger brush and really apply a decent coating of the Black Templar and really allow the contrast agents to naturally flow into those recesses and create a lovely smooth even finish. You do need to make sure you don't get any over pooling as you've put down a fair bit of contrast so feel free to wick it away from areas that are being obscured by too much pigment and once again make sure you keep this Black Templar off any of the droid plating particularly when you're getting around the droid's visor and head and helmet uh, as well as all of the different intricate fingers around the missile launcher's grip. Uh, it's, it's really important you just take your time with a nice fine detail brush to get that Black Templar where we want it and keep the integrity of our droid armor prime. Now the real workhorse layer of this paint job is Skeleton Horde, my favorite contrast paint in the entire Games Workshop contrast paint range. It's absolutely amazing. Look, say what you will about contrast. Some people hate them, some people don't. I've definitely found that I really love some of them and then I'm not a fan of certain colors and Skeleton Horde is at the top of my list. It's absolutely amazing. So what you want to do here is just 
just hit the entire droid model. Anything that isn't primed right now, slather on some skeleton horde and let that paint do its work. It's a gorgeous bony tone that shades, gets into all the recessed detail and naturally leaves a bit of that Wraithbone Prime coming through on the tops to give us a nice graduated highlight and it's just, it's absolute liquid gold. This is, you know, probably after null oil, just it blows me away how good this paint makes you look. When you're applying the Skeleton Horde, just make sure you take your time and, and be quite methodical. I like to work from one area, one foot, and work all the way up across the model because it is quite easy to accidentally miss a few bits and you'll be like, oh no, I missed the inside of his arm and all that kind of area in particular. And make sure that you do get all of those fingers that we so carefully left unadorned with Black Templar across the grip and foregrips of the weapon. Now once that skeleton horde is down, it's really important to let it dry completely. We want all of the contrast agents to do all of their settling, but there are a few areas that we need to make sure that we watch for overpooling, particularly the circular knee and elbow joints. Uh, those are kind of just a big well for concentrated pigment, and you might want to wick that away a little bit as it's drying, just so you get, don't get too much shade in those recesses. Now the droid armor is starting to look absolutely fantastic with that skeleton horde. You can see all the beautiful natural shading and highlighting that that paint creates. But we're going to take it to the next level by just really kind of crisping up the paint job and, and kind of applying a lot more of a natural realistic look just by coming in with a bit of a dry brush. We're going to be using the Terminator Stone from the Games Workshop Dry range. I just like to use these new dry brushing paints. I say new, they're new to me. They've been around for a while now. Uh, just because it, they save so much time on your paint. You don't have to keep wicking moisture out of your brush so just load up a little bit and dust it all off on a piece of paper towel and what we want to do is just really quite heavily pick off the top highlights of all of the droid armor getting a really nice crisp highlight we don't want to change the toning too much it's all about just adding natural highlights to the established beautiful bony warmth that the contrast has already created so with that dry brush down, the armor plating is complete, and for the vast majority of your droids, they are now done. But what we're going to do is add a little bit of extra spice and color to our leader to help him really separate from the rest of the squad. Now, the droid leaders have two particular insignias that we're going to be targeting. There's a yellow crest on the back half of their droid head, and also they've got a circle on their torso. We're going to be using the Games Workshop Citadel layer paint, Flash Gets Yellow, to do our yellow work. And we're going to put down a nice flat coat over all of these areas, starting off with the head. We want to work back from the small crescent section of armor plating on the top of the head all the way back down to the rest of that remaining head section including the weird little droid dreadlocks and just put a nice even coat over all of that model. You don't have to worry about maintaining any of the recessed shading from the contrast. We're going to come back and shade this up in a little bit. And then we have our circular insignia on the center of the droid commander's chest. Now this type of freehand can be a little bit tricky but there's a few key techniques you can rely on to help you get a great result. The first of which is just to take your time and really practice that brush control. You just work at it in little bits and little stages. You don't want to kind of really just do it in one big blob or you're going to get it all uneven and you won't be happy with what comes out. The second is to just really break down where you're putting your paint and of course you need a nice big reference photo. So I like to get a really strong visual reference photo really close to hand and just be looking back and forth between the model and where I want to put that piece of freehand. And in this particular situation we're really lucky because we've got all of the different overlapping armor plates of the droid to help guide us to where the exact portions of our circle will begin. So we line up that circle in the center of his plate. We can see that it crosses the bottom corner of one plate on the left and right hand side, wraps down onto the next plate, comes through one in the center, and then rejoins to create our circle. So just by following where there's yellow on those armor plates in the photo, we can add little bit by little bit to create quite a perfect circle that looks pretty good and looks absolutely amazing from over a foot away. Once those yellow layers are down, we're just going to return some of that recessed detail by giving them all a quick shade with Agrax Earthshade, just applying this neat and just making sure that you haven't got any crazy pooling. We just want a little bit of that color returned to the recesses so that it blends nicely with the droid armor plating scheme. And then once that is completely dry, we'll just come back with our Terminator Stone dry paint and just dry brush very lightly over the tops of those yellow layers just to help blend them and make sure they don't pop too much from the overall armor scheme. It helps tie them into the palette and also makes it feel a bit more kind of chalky and real like it's real paint that's been painted onto the droid armor. 
So that is our droid scheme complete. We just need to dive into some suitable Geonosis basing. First of all, I'm going to grab Charred Brown from Phileo and apply that quite liberally all over the base and the rim. That's going to be the kind of stock level of our basing color. And then I'm going to apply some Luke's APS basing glue all over the base and dip this model straight down into some Luke's APS Mars Earth, my base ready mix, which you can find over at Zorbazorb.com, which is absolutely perfect as the beginnings of a lovely Geonosis base. Once the faster Drying glue is fully cooked off. We're just going to add a few little touches of color to really geonosify those beautiful red tones. First of all, we're going to hit it with some play brown from the Vallejo game color range and do quite a reasonable dry brush, picking up most of the detail of the stones and all the bits of gravel and chunks that we've got on the base there. We're essentially trying to create the mid-tone of that beautiful orangey geonosian scheme. And we're also going to do a little bit of a dry brush of this play brown all the way around the rim of the base. Once that plague brown is down, we're just going to hit the base with a quick pass of Yushabti Bone or Bone White from the Vallejo Game Color range, just to really do a light dry brush across all of those textured surfaces, just to give them that nice crisp highlight as if the sun is glancing across the top of the Geonosian Plains. So how easy was that, guys? A very simple scheme to get these droids on the table and looking absolutely fantastic, and it is super easy to do. Uh, you can see it was, what, three or four steps, really, to hit the bulk of the model, and then with a bit of clever basing, you can really make these gorgeous bone droids pop. They look fantastic as a squad together as well. I can't wait to see these guys en masse. These droids are going to be a menacing sight to behold, and they're going to be pretty easy to smash out en masse as well. So there we have it, guys. Some absolutely stunning B1 battle droids ready to take the fight to the Republic. I absolutely love these models, and they are just a dream to paint. This is probably the easiest kind of batch process I've ever come across for preparing a unit for war, and I absolutely love the nice start contrast between the kind of bony droid armor and the red Geonosian basing. So I think they're going to look absolutely amazing when I've got a whole horde of these ready to kill some clones or be killed by my clones, which is hopefully what will be happening when we dive into our narrative campaign. If you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, let me know down in the comments below. And definitely let me know if there's any other Star Wars Legion units you're dying for me to do a painting tutorial for. We've got a whole lot more stuff in the works, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe if you're new around here and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. We are building up our sort of backlog of Star Wars Legion content now, so there's a lot more to check out. We'll have a droid assembly guide out in the coming days as well, so I'll link that down in the description so you guys can check out how to glue together these new fangdangled multi-part hard plastic models, and they are absolutely stunning. Wait until you guys get to see the sprues. It is exciting stuff. So, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time here on Zorbazorb Gaming, and keep on hobbying. Cheers, guys.